Mysterious San Luis Valley If someone told you there was a single geographic region with indigenous legends telling of doorways used by star people piloting flying seed pods, hundreds of UFO sightings, the first publicized unusual animal death case, waves of cattle mutilations, foot encounters, alien abductions, rumors of secret underground bases, and the world's most unusual sand dune desert, would you believe them? And if they told you a large phantom fire was recently reported in this area to local sheriffs by NORAD during a UFO sighting flap, or that it was a place where various localized spook lights lurk up the road from towns where a legendary devil makes occasional appearances, all within sight of privately owned 14,000 foot mountains, would you believe such a place existed? Welcome to South Central Colorado and North Central New Mexico San Luis Valley. This roughly 150 mile by 45 mile wide wishbone shaped area, running north to south, is considered to be the world's largest alpine valley and may be one of America's most anomalous regions. The semi-arid desert valley floor, perched at an elevation of 7,600 feet, averages less than 6 inches of rainfall a year and is completely ringed by majestic mountains, many of which are over 13,000 feet high. This mysterious valley is hidden from the outside world in many ways. The San Luis Valley, like many other regions around the world, has always had its share of reported sightings and encounters going back as far as the early 1930s. Many of these alleged events were covered extensively by local and regional newspapers. Over the past 30 or so years, there have been intense so-called flat periods of increased UFO sightings and of unusual animal deaths, mutilations, often with simultaneous periods reporting both phenomena. Native American Myths Could some of the most intriguing clues we have in regards to aspects of the UFO and unusual animal death phenomena lie in the mythic tradition of this and possibly other unique bioregions in the southwestern United States? We do know that 12 different Indian tribes used the San Luis Valley as a sacred hunting and vision quest area. No Native American ventured into the valley during the winter months when nighttime temperatures can drop to minus 20 degrees for weeks at a time. Although no Indians lived in the San Luis Valley full-time, the oldest continuously inhabited dwellings in North America, the Taos Pueblo, are found at the extreme southern edge of the valley. Several southwestern Indian tribes consider the San Luis Valley, most specifically the San Luis Lakes area, to be the location of the Sipapu, or place of emergence. The Indians believe that they were led underground to safety at this location just before a cleansing period of Earth changes. The Navajo version mentions our current time period as being the end of the fifth world. According to their tradition, they were warned of the upcoming cataclysms by Sky Cat China's fireballs, signaling to them that the time to travel to the Sipapu was at hand. Once underground, it is said they were cared for by Ant people for several generations until it was safe to re-emerge and repopulate the new world. Just southwest of the Sipapu stands the tallest collection of promontories in the valley, the Blanca Massif, which is considered to be the sacred mountain of the east by most southwestern tribes. This area is where the Navajos say star people enter into our reality aboard flying seed pods. This impressive group of mountains lies at the western edge of a maximum intensity aeromagnetic zone. The Sipapu lies just to the west of the Blanca Massif and the Great Sand Dunes, at the eastern edge of a minimum intensity aeromagnetic zone. The Great Sand Dunes National Monument, see Cyberwest Colorado's mystifying sandbox, is the world's highest, and probably strangest dune field. Rising almost 700 feet above the valley floor, the age of this 50 square mile pile of sand is still not precisely known. Official dating puts its age at less than 11,000 years, but it could be older. Some of the earliest traces of man in North America can be found within 10 miles of this enigmatic wonder. Man may have visited here before the dunes were formed. Who are the saucer pilots? The modern documented history of unexplained occurrences in the San Luis Valley began in the early 1950s when green fireballs were seen and reported by thousands of people all across northern New Mexico and southern Colorado. In the mid-1960s, one San Luis Valley man reported and publicly insisted that he had experienced contact and interaction with aliens. Robert Whitting, an Episcopal minister in Alamosa, Colorado, claimed he had telepathic contact with beings operating a craft that flew next to his car while traveling on the U.S. 160 highway late one night. He alleged they warned him of a large animal in the road just ahead of him and he was able to swerve around a large black dog lying dead in his lane. He claimed he then commenced to have the first of several extensive telepathic encounters with the pilots of the craft. From the fall of 1966 through the spring of 1970, there were hundreds of unidentified flying object sightings and many of the first documented cases of unusual animal deaths wads, ever reported. During peak UFO sighting waves in the late 60s, 
dozens of cars would literally line the roads watching the amazing aerial displays of unknown lights and craft as they cavorted around in the sky above the Great Sand Dunes slash Dry Lakes area. Several published photographs of these objects or lights were taken by witnesses in 1967. Snippy the Horse the September, 1967, when the San Luis Valley first gained worldwide recognition with the celebrated case of Snippy, or Lady the Horse. Snippy was found on the King Ranch, at the base of the Blanca Massif, missing all the tissue from the tip of her nose to her shoulders. The heart and brain were missing, and a strange medicine-like odor hung above the horse for several days. There were huge 18-inch giant horse-like tracks found near the carcass, and the press claimed Snippy's tracks ended 100 or so feet from where she was found. The horse's owner, Nellie Lewis, told reporters, Flying saucers killed my horse, and later, they would come out in force one day. Although Snippy is widely considered to be the first documented unusual animal death case, it is not a classic mutilation by definition. Cattle found missing soft tissue organs, such as genitalia, and or, tongue, exposed mandibles, eyes, ears, and or the unfortunate animal being drained of blood and fluids, are examples of classic mutilation. Excision areas look like surgical cuts and the surrounding crime scene is devoid of blood or any additional clues. The phenomenon may suggest some kind of experimentation. After a lull of activity in the early 70s, during a three-year period starting in August 1975, local law enforcement officials were at times run ragged by the mysterious cattle surgeons. Dozens of ranchers reported finding livestock, mainly cattle, mutilated, and there is evidence suggesting the actual number of cases was much higher than what was officially reported. These reported cases, with a few exceptions, feature crime scenes with an apparent lack of physical evidence, tracks, blood, footprints, etc. The 75 through 78 period in the San Luis Valley reflected what was going on throughout most of the United States and in parts of Canada. Unmarked helicopters, buzzing mutilation sites, numerous UFO and anomalous light sightings, widespread press coverage, and a general indifference by federal authorities concerning these baffling crimes, what wasn't reported. Several San Luis Valley reports from the 1970s are especially intriguing. According to local law enforcement officials, there were several alleged episodes of helicopters chasing cars away from areas where cattle were found mutilated. In another incident, a carload of people claimed to have witnessed a helicopter next to a cow lying in the road. They reported a man leaning over the cow and metal tubes protruding from the animal, which lay directly in front of a particular Costilla County, Colorado, rancher's house. This rancher, Emilio Lovato Jr., lost an incredible 47 head of cattle during a two-week period in October, 1975. 17 animals were mutilated, and the rest were either shot or stolen. One animal was even found over 20 miles away from his ranch. Local law enforcement officials and area ranchers claimed that helicopters used in at least some of the mutilation runs in the mid to late 70s were landing at the Taylor Ranch, a 77,000-acre area in the mountains of Costilla County. To my knowledge, this is the first time an individual has been publicly linked by law enforcement officials as possibly being involved in the unusual cattle death phenomenon in any of the thousands of unsolved cases across North America during the past 27 years. According to ex-Costilla County Sheriffs Ernest Sandoval and Pete Espinoza, Jack Taylor knew what was going on, they, the helicopters, were seen using his ranch. The locals and Taylor had engaged in a running feud since his controversial purchase in 1960 of the huge ranch that was supposed to be one of two public commons areas in the country, the other being the famous Boston Commons in Boston, Mass. Taylor was shot at the ranch in 1979 and died several years later. Curiously, the mutilation ceased officially in Costilla County until 1992. The three hardest hit ranchers in the San Luis Valley, all teachers at the same school claimed to have lost 17, 19, and 22 mutilated cattle over the years to the mystery surgeons. They claim other ranchers have also been hit repeatedly for years but never reported them. Every ranch in Costilla County had at least one mutilation case, said Espinoza, who investigated many of them during his eight years as a Costilla County Sheriff and Deputy. Official mutilation reports were curtailed sharply in the entire San Luis Valley in the early to mid-80s. However, there is ample evidence to suggest this activity continued at a reduced level and was simply not reported to authorities by ranchers. There are several genuine classic cases from the 80s, including a bull found in Moffat, Colorado, June 6, 1980. Since November, 1992, there have been almost 30 reports of unusual cattle deaths in the greater San Luis Valley area. The cattle surgeons are still at work. They're back. This mysterious and remote area of the Rocky Mountains continues to have unexplained sightings of unusual craft and lights, and the local population, by and large, agrees that something is going on in the San Luis Valley.
During the onset of an intense UFO flap period last November, 1993, numerous multiple witnessed day and night sightings of a silent, large silver sphere with blinking red and blue lights sequencing around the bottom pairs of orange orbs flying through the sky, and a large triangular-shaped craft hundreds of feet in length, were reported within the confines of this large remote valley. On Sunday night, August 21, 1994, 20 witnesses watched a formation of 12 objects flying leisurely over Del Norte, Colorado, formed the letter G, then a triangle, and a circle, as they drifted southward. After watching the mystery objects for almost an hour, one of the objects peeled off from the main formation and headed down through the clouds toward the group of witnesses. As it approached, they could discern the structure and sequence of red and blue lights flashing on the underside of the craft, Bigfoot. Over the course of my investigation into paranormal occurrences in this valley, I have stumbled onto rumors and legends of Bigfoot-type creatures that have circulated here since the 19th century. Until now I have never uncovered what I consider to be a documented sighting of these elusive creatures. According to local law enforcement, during the last half of the last week in December 93 and the first half of the first week of January 94, there were seven reported Bigfoot encounters in a seven-square-mile area in the northern New Mexico portion of the San Luis Valley. A trucker spotted and reported a large, hairy creature seen near the highway, a sighting of an extremely rare white Bigfoot, another sighting of a Bigfoot that appeared to be stalking a herd of elk, and an encounter with a large two-footed creature that ran right by a ranch house and allegedly tossed a dog over a six-foot high fence. On December 31, 1993, two sets of tracks were discovered by chance in a remote area and reported to authorities. A videotape was taken by a law enforcement official of these tracks, one 21 inches in length, the other 18 inches, descending over a variety of terrain, including snow, mud, and rocks, side by side for several hundred yards down a steep cow path. Several of the tracks were pristine, even showing toenail marks. During this seven-day time period, a high strangeness report was filed to authorities by a distraught mother and son. The two claimed to have been driving back from the mountains at dusk when they rounded a curve in the road, came face to face with what they described as a tall, dark hairy creature with large pointed ears and large glowing eyes. According to their account, as related by the sheriff, the creature didn't resemble a bear, it had long arms that dangled well below its knees. Not knowing quite what to do, they put the car in reverse and tried to turn around. This evidently scared the creature, which dropped down on all fours and ran away like a dog. Both witnesses were very shaken by their close encounter, which was taken seriously by local law enforcement who mounted a search that turned up nothing. Strange creatures have been seen for many years in the San Luis Valley. One story claims individuals in the 60s found a platypus in a high mountain lake in the Blanca Peaks area. The Devil One of the more bizarre apparitions reported is the legendary Devil, or Old Scratch, as some of the locals have dubbed him. This enigmatic entity has been reported for almost 100 years and has puzzled Española Valley and San Luis Valley residents with his legendary public appearances, sometimes in front of dozens of witnesses, usually during the latter stages of the Lent season. The stories and legends all have the same general theme. A tall, handsome, well-dressed stranger enters a cantina where patrons are drinking and dancing sinfully during Lent. He immediately zeroes in on the prettiest girl and mesmerizes her with his lively repartee. He asks her to dance, and as she dances, she begins to act with a modest abandon on the dance floor. At this point, the locals usually start to notice something amiss with the young lady as she gyrates with the stranger, who is generally described as wearing a white or off-white tuxedo. Then, this is where the accounts become unique. As legend would have it, the stranger has been said to throw off a glove and reveal a claw, or kick off his shoes and reveal cloven hoofs, and even one report had a devil's tail pop out of his pants. The locals then give chase, and usually old scratch heads toward the back of the building outside and vanishes, leaving no tracks. This mystery visitor, it is said, tends to make several appearances during a chosen Lent season. One series of sightings in the 1930s mentions him as being an unknown musician sitting in with local bands. Another tells of a man grabbing Old Scratch before he could make his escape. Supposedly, the now pious man received deep claw-like scratches that left permanent scars on his face. The devil's last flurry of alleged visits occurred in 1984. Mystery Woman in Red In the spring of 1992, the uncle of the police chief of a northern New Mexico town insisted on reporting the following event. He claimed to have been driving into town late one night, during the last week of Lent, when he saw a woman dressed in a red evening dress walking along the road. He stopped to offer her a ride into town. She climbed into the front seat of his pickup truck, and as he turned to ask her why she was walking on a deserted road so late at night, he noticed she had hairy goat legs and hoofs. 
she then instantly dematerialized from the front seat of his truck. If it had been anyone else but my uncle who is a very devout and stable man, I would have asked them what kind of tequila they'd been drinking," said the very puzzled police chief, who hesitantly related to me his uncle's story. I tried to talk him out of it, but he absolutely insisted on filing an official report concerning his supposed encounter. Are San Luis Valley residents just imagining these bizarre objects and entities? Are the many cows that have been found mutilated in this remote area simply exhibiting the effects of unusual scavenger action? If I had not seen more than a few of these animals and objects personally, I would be hard-pressed to believe these reports, but it appears there is and probably always has been something very strange going on here in the mysterious San Luis Valley, one of America's most anomalous regions.